Meet the sheriffs. Let's go and introduce ourselves. My high court enforcement officers. We're here today to execute a high court writ. They're the men whose job it is to get you your money back. It's an arrestable offence to stop me and do my job. If you've been ripped off and don't know where to turn. I'm not waiting anymore. I'm ordered to seize goods to clear this debt, which would mean clearing this place out. If you've been to court but still not been paid what you're owed. Why don't you just tell me who you are? This is an absolute crock. You need to pay this. The High Court enforcement officers are charged by law to recover what a court says is rightfully yours. I've seized your car, sir. You can have a letter through the door or we'll go through the window. Whoa, 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 whoa. It's time to call the sheriffs. Just collected 42 grand. Coming up... Adrian Skeets paid £3,000 for a car, but got a load of problems. He would blatantly take my money and sell me a car. It's not two weeks old. It's full of problems. Can the sheriffs get him his money back? You're going to have to get him on the phone while we're here. If you can't, we're going to remove him with goods. Pete's attempts to get unpaid wages from a roofer sees the debtor hit the ceiling. He's trying to knock our teeth out. Because I'm going to kill you, so that's the police need to deal with him now. And sheriffs Lawrence and Kev stand their ground, chasing up a debt in Kent. We're here today to remove goods from the premises to clear his debt. I suggest you stay outside. No. It's 5.30 a.m. in Stockport. Sheriffs Pete Spencer and Dave Crabtree are visiting Burgess Roofing Services. They employed Conrad Money as a site supervisor for 15 years before he was made redundant. He wasn't given any notice or redundancy money. £3,000 in holiday pay and pension contributions were also withheld. Conrad took legal action, but Burgess Roofing Services settled out of court, agreeing to £15,000, being paid to Conrad over six months. But despite this agreement, not one payment has been made. The case went back to court, and a judge ordered Burgess Roofing to give Conrad his money back. And this morning, Pete already has some valuable assets in his sights. He'll seize, if need be, to get Conrad his money. We believe there's potentially of, uh, some expensive motorcycles or motorbikes at this property as well this morning, and we've got some intelligence that uh, they might be kept in the garage to the rear. Wake somebody up, I think. Pete and Dave are determined to get Conrad what he's owed. Pete finds the front entrance and someone to greet him. Good morning, Mr Burgess. Yeah. Hiya. Enforcement officer from uh, Got an Court Rate. It's regarding a Conrad Money. Or Conrad Money. Mr Burgess is far from pleased with this early morning visit. As Pete explains what he's come for, we're asked to leave, but continue filming from the pavement. It's £24,220.60 outstanding, but that's what we've been ordered by the High Court judge to come, basically, to collect that money today. Some garages to the rear, I believe, are yours. There's motorcycles in there. They belong to you. This defendant doesn't seem so keen to pay up. Getting nowhere at the front door, the sheriffs badly need some leverage and go in search of the motorbikes. Neither of them are prepared for what happens next. Mr Burgess tries to forcibly remove Dave from the property. Don't touch me. Don't touch me again. We're allowed to be. Get hands off me. He then threatens to knock his teeth out. Well, I'll call the police. With the situation rapidly deteriorating, Pete decides it's best to call the police. I'm an I caught enforcement officer. Um, we're actually being threatened by the defendant at the moment, and he's threatening to knock our teeth out, knock us out. Yeah, I do need assistance as soon as possible, please. He's threatening to knock our teeth out. We can sort of aimed at you, wasn't it? Yeah. Rather than me. Um, well, I went to get hold of me around there. Because I'm going to kill you. So that's at the end of the day. Police need to deal with him now. Unfazed by the seething Mr Burgess's threats, Pete goes back into the garden and calmly explains the law is on his side. I'm staying here. I've got the, the authority to be here. I've got the high court writ, which is live. You're stopping me from doing my job. It's an arrestable offence to stop me from doing my job. The police will deal with you when they arrive. With the threat to murder them on hold, 
Mr. Burgess changes tack and insists as the claim is against his business, not him personally, the sheriffs have no right to be there. Pete disagrees and has the paperwork to prove it. Let me just show you. There's a, there's a writ from the I-Cart in your personal name at this address. As Mr. Burgess storms back inside and with the police en route, all Pete and Dave can do is sit and wait for them to arrive. Later, we'll see whether they can get any money back for Conrad. Sheriffs can go anywhere in England and Wales to execute writs. It's a job that takes them all over the country. Today, Sheriffs Mark Newton and Tony Smith are on the south coast, on their way to visit a second-hand car garage in Portsmouth, called the Low Mileage Centre. It's a five-mile journey. Mark and Tony have little information about the dealership, apart from the fact the owner is a Mr Dave Morley, who's 45 years old. Yeah, hopefully we'll get someone at this premise. It's, um... If not, we'll, we'll just sit and wait for a little while until it, do, it does open. The sheriffs are attending on behalf of Adrian Skeets, a self-employed bricklayer also from Portsmouth. He travels widely for work, and a reliable car has always been an essential tool of his trade. I always need my car. It's Without a car, there's no point in me having any tools. There's just no, no car, no work, basically. Deciding to upgrade to a new car was therefore a major investment, which made it all the more galling when he was sold a dud packed full of problems. It's left him out of pocket for repairs, dragged through the courts, and desperately in need of the sheriff's help. I just spent all my money on a nightmare. When he decided he wanted a new car, Adrian searched numerous local showrooms looking for the perfect vehicle, and it wasn't long before he thought he'd found it. The showroom in question was the low mileage centre in Portsmouth. When I first saw the car, I liked it. It was reasonably good price. It had one lady owner, full service history, very low mileage. Can't go wrong. Adrian paid a £1,600 deposit, and five days later, turned up to collect the car and pay the remainder of the £3,800 cost. But when they produced it, all was far from right. When they brought it round the front, that's when I noticed a lot of damage on the door and questioned it straight away. And they said, bring it back in three days and we'll fix it for you. Adrian agreed to return the car for repair and paid in full. But before it was time to take it back in, he started noticing other, even more serious faults. When I parked the car up, the steering wheels were at an angle, and that's when I noticed that the tyres were bald and the tracking was out. We noticed that the windscreen wasn't fitted to the panel. They've glued the panel to the windscreen. That windscreen has to be fitted correctly to protect the airbag, so my passenger has no safety. The windscreen at the back here leaks. The water went over all the electrics in the back here, and there's water damage. And then there's just a multitude of bits and pieces going wrong with the car. And after the three, four days, I, just, I said, that's it, I want my money back. But the low mileage centre point blank refused to return his money. Needing to know just how bad a condition the vehicle was in, Adrian took it to an official Mercedes garage for a health check. All the red show up as a failure, and the yellow should be on the advisory list. The exhaust, the suspension, the steering, I mean, that was both of them. And then all the tyres. A red mark indicates a problem so serious that in the Mercedes garage's opinion, it would cause the car to fail its MOT. With the health check in hand, Adrian confronted the low mileage centre and demanded a full refund. Well, I was very angry very angry that he could he was blatantly take my money and sell me a car that's going to cost half the price again to fix it so I'm thinking I've just bought this off you it's not two weeks old it's full of problems he decided he had no option but to take the garage to court with Adrian representing himself 
the Low Mileage Centre's director, Dave Morley, contested the case. But the judge agreed with almost all of Adrian's points and awarded in his favour. Despite this, Mr Morley still hasn't paid up. And having been forced to find the money himself to make repairs and with still more required, Adrian remains out of pocket. It was hard. It was hard because I spent most of my money on the car and now I'm faced with 15, 1700 pounds worth of repairs. Where am I going to get that money from? It's, it's mind-boggling that he should be allowed to sell his cars like this. Desperate to get the money he's owed, Adrian's last hope of seeing it rests with the sheriffs. And so it is that Mark and Tony arrive at the low mileage center, which is very much open for business. As they head in, a figure exits out the back door of the office, while a second older man is still inside. Mark's suspicions are aroused. Was that the owner making a swift getaway? Okay, he's nipped out the back one walked in. Is it? Yeah. Is it? I reckon. He's 45, isn't he? Before speaking to the man in the office, Mark wants to check something. Just hang around there and I'll walk down the back. Mark's sheriff senses are tingling. But unfortunately, the man matching the description of the owner has vanished. The sheriff's attention turns to the other man, still in the sales office. Time for some introductions. It's yeah. about a high court writ that's been issued for low mileage centre. I don't know anything about this. From uh, Mrs. Webster and Mr. Skeets. They've sent us here today to collect the payment or remove goods. The man left holding the fort claims to know nothing about the case. With two sheriffs and a live writ on the premises, he needs to deal with it quickly, or the dealership's vehicles will be seized. Um, anything to do with it? Well, I, I, I oh, work yeah. here, but I, it's... Uh, OK, yeah. So, um, I need to tell um, my boss about this, basically. Yeah. Um, and yeah. he's not here. OK, you'll need to give him a ring uh, while we're here. On the phone now, mate. You're gonna have to get him on the phone while we're here. Um, if you can't, we're gonna remove goods. The seemingly confused employee agrees to get his elusive boss on the phone. Meanwhile, Mark and Tony take the opportunity to browse the goods on display. That is clean, ain't got a scratch on it anyway, either. I like it. Hmm. Right. Well, now fun, they're proper juicy, isn't they? You gotta sell me a BM now as well as a Mini. You don't even work here when you try to sell me the car. <laughs> With the minutes ticking by and no sign of the owner, the sheriffs may be forced to call for the tow trucks. Then Mark's called back into the sales office. Has the mysterious owner resurfaced? The employee tells Mark his boss won't be back until the afternoon, but has given him his credit card number to make the payment. But there's still a problem. He doesn't have the card. I can't do that. Oh. We got chip pin machines. We have to. We have to have the card. Yeah. This car salesman doesn't seem too familiar with the concept of chip and pin. Card goes in the machine, as you know, and then just bang in your pin number. For Mark and Tony, it's now a case of card or cars. Where is he? Is he far away? Time for another hasty phone call to the boss. Thanks. Thank you. <clears throat> bye. Bye. Right, he's going to get somebody to drive the car to me. Yeah, no problem. Half an hour later, as Tony continues his sales pitch to Mark in the showroom, unbeknownst to them, the credit card's been mysteriously delivered through the back of the office. I've got the card. It's Does it? They now have both the card and the PIN number, still minus the owner. It's now a case of stick a PIN in it, and it's done. Payment in full. Lovely. Right, well, I hope I won't see you again. Hopefully not. Well, not no. under these circumstances. No. <laughs> With the debt cleared, there's no reason for the sheriffs to come back, unless it's for a test drive. Despite no direct contact with owner Mr Morley, it's been a successful hour's work for Mark and Tony. I think, basically, the, the owner of the company was quite keen to not actually meet us in person. Yeah, it's a, it's a good result. To be honest, wasn't in there more than an hour, and we've got paid in full. And for Adrian Skeets, 
it means getting the news and the cheque he's desperately hoped for. It's a shame that not everybody knows how much power the sheriff have, but I'm so pleased that they've got it. I'd like to have seen it when uh, they went down to get the money, because I'd have been smiling all day long. But it's very pleasing to know that there are people there on your side that will just go and get it. The low mileage center told us they addressed the faults Mr. Skeets raised, including the paintwork, tires, and windscreen, and that an MOT testing center had passed the car as roadworthy. For these reasons, they said they refused to return Adrian his money. Boss David Morley said at the time of the sheriff's visit, he had left the office to attend a previously arranged meeting, and had he known they were coming, he would have made a point of being there to meet them. He said the only reason they hadn't paid the court order was because the appeals process was still ongoing at the time of the sheriff's visit. Sheriffs cover the length and breadth of England and Wales, enforcing over 70,000 High Court writs every year. Scotland and Northern Ireland have their own enforcement system, but they're all about the same thing, getting people back the money that a court of law says is rightfully theirs. Hiya. Good morning, sir. My name's Mr. Griggs. I'm an enforcement officer. Their enforcements can come at any time, anywhere. These days, a High Court writ costs £60. If the sheriffs are successful, there's nothing more to pay. We've got a live High Court writ, so we'll send here today to remove that vehicle. If they're unsuccessful, the only cost is a £60 admin fee. Back in Stockport, Sheriffs Pete and Dave are still after over £20,000 owed to Conrad Money by building boss Alan Burgess who so far refused to cooperate. They're waiting for the police to arrive so they can make peaceful entry into his garage where valuable motorbikes are stored. 30 minutes later, the police finally arrive. Morning, gents. It's left to Pete to explain to the police exactly what the powers of the sheriffs are. Don't need to. Basically, I'm commanded by the High Court judge to attend here, either to collect that amount or seize goods to that value. But obviously, it's a threat to kill. That's why I've obviously called you guys, because they just won't listen in. They think, he thinks we're bailiffs, but we, we're not. We, we've got different powers to bailiffs, so... <clears throat> While the police go and speak to Mr Burgess, Pete waits patiently outside. They're going to speak to the gentleman now. They've just looked at our paperwork. Um, I say my interest is in that garage there rather than the the property. So we'll just see what's said once I've uh, spoke to him. With the police acting as peacekeepers, Pete wants to get on with seizing the motorbikes locked in the garage that Mr Burgess now admits do belong to him. I'm not proposing to remove any goods. What I'm going to do is I'm going to seize them on paperwork to protect the outstanding debt. But Pete's offer to only seize on paper doesn't placate Mr Burgess. He's still refusing to let them into the garage. But Pete's going to go in, one way or another. You can have a letter through the door or we'll go through the window. Either way, it don't make any difference. We are going to seize those goods today. Mr Burgess asks the police to intervene and stop the sheriffs entering his garage. He has said that it's all private. It don't matter, there's an open window now. It's irrelevant. But by now, Pete's patience has run out. It's all right, we'll go through the window. It's fine. Right there, I'll pass it paperwork across. Just press it, pad? Yeah, yeah. Then, I think the pen's not far enough. Grab one off his top in there, isn't it? You'd be able to come out the back door, I'd have thought. So now he's in through the hardware. Do you want to just walk around with us? Finally inside, they find and seize on paper two classic motorbikes. They'll remain on the premises, and if no payment is made in the next five days, Pete can come back to remove them. Just lay some bags rather than going through everything. Get this yeah. After a morning of aggravation, it looks like Pete and Dave are almost done with this enforcement. But then Mr Burgess's temper gets the better of him again, as he threatens that the bikes won't be there by the time Pete comes back. With what is now the court's property in jeopardy, Pete decides he's got no choice but to remove them today after all. With night turning to day, it's time to remove the bikes and call the tow truck. 
Hmm? I believe they will be at risk if we do leave now. He did say they would be set on fire if we came to take them. We just went for the removal truck to come now to uh, set them away to put in safe storage. The removal of goods is the ultimate sanction the sheriffs have at their disposal. If necessary, the motorbikes can now be sold to pay Mr Burgess's debt. This particular one has got a bit of history with it. Suppose it's worth... There's one on eBay at the moment that's worth £20,000. With his prize machines on their way out of his property, Mr Burgess goes from making death threats to trying to elicit sympathy. Motorcycles that have just been taken away, the black one, I've had it for 50 years. I bought that when I was 16 years of age. My wife and I were absolutely heartbroken over the, the loss of that machine. Now I have to go back to a solicitor and see whether or not I can recover my motorcycles. Pete takes no pleasure in seizing family heirlooms, but has to ensure the debt he's ordered by the courts to collect gets paid. We've, we've come and done our job. Um, remove the items which are going to be for the value of the debt and uh, um, he's got the option to pay now and we, we've, we've got the goods unfortunately so um, it's down to him. It's been a hard day's night for the sheriffs but a successful one. Conrad Money will finally get at least part of what he's owed one way or the other. He's been going on for a while um, and I, I think he's just let principles get in the way and that's why he's not dealt with it but um, Obviously, he's, he's going to have to deal with it now. I mean, hopefully, he'll, he'll get it sorted out, get the money together and, and pay for them before they go to auction. Um, but at the moment, that's where they've gone. They've gone into storage for five days uh, with a view to, to sell them. Despite the sheriff's high rate of success, it can be hard to get people their money back especially when taking on companies, operating with multiple trading names or businesses that don't exist anymore. Today, Sheriffs Mark Newton and Tony Smith are heading to Bromley on what will turn out to be just such a wild goose chase. They've been asked to take on a tooth whitening company who appear to be less than whiter than white. After a company that seems to have three different names, it's got a company name with trading as another name, with another limited company on the end. Just going to have to try and get in there and see if we can find them. The man they're on their way to help is Stephen Todd from South London. When he's not working, he likes to walk up to this local airfield to watch the gliders landing. Unfortunately for him, it's a walk he's had the chance to do all too frequently since he was made redundant two years ago. It had been a job at a bookmaker's that Stephen had been in for 20 years. Determined to find himself a new career, he decided to invest his redundancy money in a business venture and came across an advert for a tooth whitening franchise online, Smart Smile. When you're made redundant, it's a bit of a shock to the system. And obviously you're keen to sort of try and move on. And uh, when I saw the advert uh, for the teeth whitening, uh, I thought it, was, um, it looked like a really good sort of opportunity, you know. Excited by the idea of the new business, he met with self-styled franchise expert Robert York, the man brokering the sale of Smart Smile franchises on behalf of the business owner, Edward Hills. He gave a presentation. This was going to revolve around this top-of-the-range top of website. I was the first person to be buying into this uh, franchise, so I had my reservations because there was no track record. To put Stephen's mind at rest about the fact he was the first franchisee, Mr York added a clincher to the contract. Mr York then gave me a 100% return on investment policy. He told me if there was any problems going forward, uh, and I wanted my money back, then uh, that's what he, would, uh, he, he was willing to do that. After getting the policy in writing, Stephen was satisfied he had the protection he sought. He went ahead and used all his redundancy money to buy the franchise for £14,000. With big plans for his new franchise, 
Stephen visited Smart Smile owner Edward Hills for the training and equipment that came as part of the £14,000 package. But all did not go to plan. I received a little bit of training. He then started to produce the leaflets, uh, which did have the company name on, uh, without any doubt. However, my details weren't on the actual leaflets. And he said, oh, just write it in in ink. You know, there's like 3,000 of these leaflets. And the top of the range equipment he was promised was no better. So I received this lamp from Mr. Hills. It was broken, it doesn't stay together properly. Also, the lamp itself doesn't work. Stephen realized he'd made a big mistake. With so much of his money at risk, he decided to exercise his 100% return of investment policy. Only problem was, Neither Mr. York nor Mr. Hills were interested in honouring it. Basically, the contract that I'd signed and also the pros what was stated in the prospectus, he effectively thrown it in the bin. Stephen took both Mr. Hills and Mr. York to the county court. The case was contested, but Stephen won judgment against both defendants' companies, who were ordered to give Stephen his money back. To date, he's still not received a penny. This was uh, going to be, uh, you know, my future. Uh, this is uh, uh, my living. So it was, uh, you know, well, hopefully it was going to be my living. It uh, obviously wasn't. Stephen's last hope now rests with Mark and Tony. They arrive at the business address of Robert York's latest tooth whitening company, Diamond Teeth Whitening in Bromley. Diamond Teeth Whitening. Sixth floor. Mark's hoping there'll be assets in the company's name at the premises. Time to find out. Hiya. Hi. High Court writ has been issued for Diamond Teeth Whiten from Stephen Todd. Well, the directors aren't here. I've got any way of getting hold of them at all. One of them's on holiday and one's at the hospital. Yeah, because we're here today to see goods. The woman leaves a message for boss Robert York. Can you give me a call in the office as soon as you pick up this message? Um, I've got the number and it's very urgent. Mark agrees to wait until Mr York calls back. In the meantime, he gives the woman more detail on the writ, but she's quick to point out a potential problem with it. It's all in the name. He's got the writ against Gold Cross Investments, Diamond Teeth Whitening and Smart Europe Limited. This is Diamond Teeth Whitening contracts. The writ is against Diamond Teeth Whitening Limited. The woman says the company is Diamond Teeth Whitening Contracts Limited. Only one word's difference, but it could have major consequences for Stephen. Right, have you got anything to say who you are, like are your company's house certificates? And then I'll just do a few checks. Mark gets in touch with his office to see if they can get any details to back up what the woman's claiming. I'm here now. Um, the company we got here is Diamond Teeth Whitening Contracts Limited. Um, saying that the other company, Diamond Teeth Whitening, went into a, is that what you're saying, went into administration? Yeah. Yeah. While the office checks on the company names, Mark and Tony have a quick scout of the premises, which shows that there is a tooth whitening business on site with assets. That's theirs. They do do it in there. They do do it in there. It's equipment Mark could potentially seize. If he can prove, it belongs to Diamond Teeth Whitening Limited. Moments later, the woman manages to raise boss Robert York. Hiya. Well, unfortunately, we, we have to act on a high court writ that we've been issued, so it would mean we have to seize goods today. Mr. York isn't pleased to hear from the sheriffs, and even less pleased about Mark's threat to seize goods. He argues that his new company is a completely different entity. But that won't stop Mark seizing the goods on paper until Mr. York can prove it. What I'll have to do today is I'll have to list the goods, leave a copy of the venture, and then you get seven days in which to... I won't take anything away, I'll just have to list everything that's in here, and then you get seven days in to send it, the stuff into our office, yeah? But after speaking to their office, yeah. Tony's got bad news for Mark. Cheers, darling. Thank you. Bye bye. That's closed, yeah? Mm. The other two don't exist. Yeah. 
the office confirms that Diamond Teeth Whitening Limited has now closed and that Diamond Teeth Whitening Contracts Limited is a different company. It's a body blow for Stephen Todd's hopes of getting his money back. OK. Thanks very much. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. They basically closed that company down. Unfortunately for the person who's owed the money, I don't think they're ever going to get that. All too often, the sheriffs are left chasing debts from companies that are no longer trading and which have no remaining assets to pay off their debts. For Mark, Stephen's story is something the sheriffs see all too often. Yeah, he probably invested all the money he had into that. And, you know, I wish I could go in there and get that back for him, but I can't. And I, I wish I knew where it went or where it is, but I can't find that out, unfortunately. So it's just one of those things. Sheriffs Lawrence Griggs and Kev McNally are in Kent, on their way to see a man who's got previous with the sheriffs and not kept his word. The defendant is a Mr Andy Chance. He was supposed to be paying us in full, despite having a couple of follow-up letters. He just hasn't paid. So we're off to, down there today to see if we can collect £6,285.53 or potentially remove goods. They're going back to Mr Chance's computer company on behalf of a man who wasn't paid for work he carried out for the company. When the case went to court and Mr Chance failed to contest it, a judge ruled in the man's favour and awarded him damages of just over £6,000. When the sheriffs first visited Mr Chance, after the deadline to settle his debt had passed, he paid £2,000 but has since stalled on paying off the rest as promised. Today is the last chance for Mr Chance. We're not there on a, a seizure visit this time. We are there to remove because he's, he's had a previous visit where goods were seized. We're looking for full payment or removal today. What number we got them? Unit 15, Chislet Close. Unit 15. First, though, they need to find the right unit. Leave parcels with panel care, it says. Yeah, that's the wrong door. Why? This is the door. <laughs> door, unit, door, unit. Hello, then. Yeah. They're looking for Andy Chance. Name's Mr Griggs, I'm an enforcement officer. While they're in the right place, there's no sign of Mr Chance. The woman inside explains Mr Chance has nipped home and is due back in a few minutes. Basically, we're here today to remove goods from the premises to clear his debt. I suggest to stay outside. No. Well, you could, I mean, I'm not going anywhere. Just we won't be going outside. We're going to start making an inventory of what we're going to be taking. We'll just wait for him to turn up. Yeah. And if he, do, if he doesn't, we'll, uh, we'll call in trucks. With the threat of trucks hanging in the air, Lawrence and Kev go to work making a list of goods that can be seized against the outstanding debt. About 21 boxes of Cat 5 E cable. No-one knows stuff like that. You know it's called Cat5E cable. He's got it on the box. You need to get out more. He's got it on the box. <laughs> Their high-tech list-making is interrupted by the arrival of the man they've been waiting for, the defendant, Andy Chance. Hi there. Hi. It's time to find out why he's failed to pay as agreed. We've written to you and, and got nothing because you said you wanted to pay it in full. You asked for the bank details according to what I've got here. Right. We had a letter from you requesting the bank details so that you could make an instant payment in full by right. transfer. Right. And then you didn't. Oh, sorry, I thought we'd agree we'd pay it in stages. Um, no, I've got nothing, nothing to that effect on here at all. Okay. Um, so we're here today for £6,285.53. Right. Um, and we are today on a removal visit, not a seizure visit, because my colleague was already on the seizure visit. At this point, we're asked to leave the premises, as Mr Chance explains that he doesn't have the £6,000 he owes. All right, is there anybody that can help you out? No debit, credit cards. Mr Chance maintains he's got no access to the necessary funds right away and asks for a few days to sort out payment. Given the situation, this isn't good enough for Lawrence. It needs to be done today. 
because that, that's the problem, because we are on a removal. We can give you a little bit of time if you need to make a few phone calls. Kev spots something that could give them the perfect leverage to make Mr Chance pay up what he owes. An expensive saloon parked right outside. Time to bring out another tool at the sheriff's disposal. With the clamp safely on, Lawrence now has Mr Chance exactly where he wants him. Right, um, bad news for you, unfortunately, I, I think, potentially. The Audi, yours? No. Even sheriffs can make mistakes. It turns out the car's nothing to do with Mr. Chance. Oh, my colleague said you turned up with an Audi. I bet I'm going clamp it. <laughs> While Kev swiftly removes the clamp from the vehicle. Inside, Lawrence's firm but fair stance has had the desired effect. Mr. Chance agrees to pay £1,000 straight away, and the rest in two more instalments by the end of the month. There's your copy of that. That's your balance. £1,000 by the 14th, which is Friday, balanced by the 30th. It's a great result for the sheriffs, and means the man who originally lost out to Andy Chance will now finally get his money back. OK, so if you can just sign and print for me. OK, then, Mr. Chance. Bye-bye. For Lawrence, it's what he came for. Cash up front and a concrete arrangement in place for the debt to be cleared. Mr Chance's brother um, came and paid £1,000 for him on a credit card. He's going to pay another £1,000 by the end of the week. But we've seized everything. He signed a walk-in possession agreement, so um, I shouldn't think there's going to be any more problems. I shouldn't think we'll have to come back. For the sheriffs, some payments are easier to collect than others. And heading deep into the English countryside, Mark and Tony are hopeful that today their luck might be in. They're on their way to visit Jenny Tooley, former landlady of the Shepherd and Dog pub. Chef Sam Morton was promised a bonus if he stayed in his job as chef for the pub. But after agreeing to stay on, his bonus never materialised, so he resigned. The matter went to court but the Toolies didn't attend. The judge awarded Sam Morton £703, but he's still not been paid. Aiming to get the former employee their money back, Mark and Tony pull up and head in. Can Mark convince the former landlady that this is a debt she needs to pay? Hiya. Hello. I'm after Jenny Tooley. Yeah. It's about our High Court writ that's been issued. It says Jenny Tooley, the Shepherd and Dog Limited, by Mr Morton. That's yes. been written back to? Written back to... Uh, letters gone off to them. The landlady says the Shepherd and Dog Limited business has now been wound up, so any debt it owes is now void. But Mark's got some bad news for her. They took the judgment against you personally. And the Shepherd and Dog Limited, and uh, it's, it's against. Well, I'll show you the paperwork. It's Jenny Tooley, the Shepherd and Dog Limited. Yeah. Oh, we're ready to collect the money or remove goods. The landlady argues that it was her husband that dealt with the case, which she knows little about. But as the sheriffs point out, if your name's on the writ, it's no one else's problem. Technically, we'll never have nothing to do with your husband yeah. because it's in your name. And. Um, this is the address that um, the court's got. Yeah, this, I mean, this is the first address we've been to, so this is the address that was on the rear, yeah. We haven't even got an address for the pub, so... So this is the address that they, they wrote to. £1,431. What we're going to do is just pay it, then. Result! Only seven minutes at the property, and Mark and Tony have scored a home run. Mrs Tooley puts up little opposition. Instead, agreeing to pay without a walking possession or clamp in sight. All the sheriffs have got to do now is find a way for her to pay. A simple card transaction. Not always easy when your chip and pin machine needs a mobile phone signal and you're in the middle of the country. Problem we got. We're going to have no signal here, are we, at all? Well, we might have. It's coming on. It's connecting. Not much, but... Try it. Let's try it and see. 
Let me pop your card in first. I don't think this is going to work, to be honest with you. Every time we come to a little place like this, uh, we always struggle to get a signal. Just add one and it's gone. Oh no, it's back. Don't move that. I'm yes. not. I'm not. Yeah. Finally, Tony finds a signal and payment goes through. Despite the obstacles presented, the sheriffs have got a result on behalf of Sam Morton. I'll leave you, um, there'll be another piece of paper with my name and number on as well. Our office details if you need to ask any questions. Time to head to the next job. Very much, Mr. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye-bye. Almost. That machine? Yeah, it's in the back pocket, anyway, I think. Oh, I've got a nice one that's been there. <laughs> I've got so many things in my pockets, I don't know what things are. Yeah, it was a, a good result. I mean, we got it paid quite quickly. We had a couple quicker than that, but, yeah, that wasn't long. Um, it was a good result. I think the lady realised that they'd someone at her end had made a mistake and just passed on the paperwork so it was, they were actually liable she could quite clearly see her name was there and she done the right thing and paid straight away at least we got some money today which is quite good mrs Tooley told us she didn't agree with the court's verdict as in her eyes mr morton's bonus was to be paid at the end of his year's work not before she said she'd received no notification of the final court hearing and felt her correspondence wasn't properly taken into consideration by the court. She said she was trying to contest the award and is waiting to hear back from the court on this. It's one of the quickest £1,500 that Mark's ever taken on behalf of a client. They can head on to their next job, while Sam Morden can expect a cheque in the post very soon. Since Pete and Dave visited Burgess Roofing to try and seize boss Alan Burgess's motorbikes, the bikes have been sold at auction. Despite this, a considerable debt owed to former employee Conrad Money still remains, and the sheriffs are currently planning a further visit to Mr Burgess to try and get that back as well. Stephen Todd, meanwhile, is continuing to pursue other legal avenues to try and get his money returned to him. I, I don't intend to uh, just let it go because I do have other forms of... Um... Uh, redress, which I intend to uh, pursue. Uh, however, it's a learning experience, that's all you can really say. And I hope other people will learn something from it. Just be careful <laughs> and watch out.